definitely, I mean, it feels good. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going over a 2020 Range Rover Discovery. So, as always, a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover Range Rover slash Jaguar dealership here in downtown Salt Lake for providing us with the Discovery Sport. Check out their inventory in the link below. Let's get into it. Under the hood of the Discovery Sport, we have a turbocharged two liter four cylinder that goes to a nine speed automatic transmission. Now, in terms of fuel economy, it's 19 around town and then 24 on the highway with power up, being 286 horsepower and then 295 pound feet of torque and a zero to 60 time of about six and a half seconds. I just wanted to quickly show you guys the key fob because, well, you've got this little function. So you can pop the lights on or off just with the key, which is a pretty nice little touch. You guys notice that they are full LEDs. But other than that, the thing that's really interesting is the hood is actually pretty small. But the other thing that makes it look even smaller is you have this black accent piece here at the top. So it kind of like, in effect, like shortens the appearance of the hood itself. And then here's a better look at those LED lights. And then everything is all blacked out on the front end, which is pretty nice. Parking sensors all along the bottom as well. I actually like that little vent there in the middle. Just kind of makes it look sportier. And again, it's the Discovery Sport, so it makes sense. But there's your whole look at the front end. Coming around the side here, we've got two 35 millimeter tires and 20 inch rims in the front and in the rear as well and then this one has the blacked out rims which i think go really well with the overall theme of this particular car because you have the red and then obviously the black to contrast that and that does say discovery there on the side the mirrors are black and then notice the roof is black as well so again it kind of creates this really nice contrast in general and here's your full side angle on the discovery sport now here is the key fob for the Discovery Sport. You have a couple functions. You've got the unlock, the lock, the light button I showed you guys earlier, and the release for the hatch. So you just hold that down and it'll automatically pop open with the Sport. Now coming into the rear here, we do have a cargo cover on the back of the Discovery Sport. So you basically just have to pull it here and then you just have to line it up with both sides and then it'll hook in pretty simple to use. Other than the cargo cover, you do get a USB right here and then a 12 volt power outlet right there. Rubber floor covering here in the back, which is pretty nice. And then underneath all of that, you actually will find the spare tire in the back of the Sport. I actually really like this little touch right here, just kind of like a nice little aesthetic piece. Now notice that this is actually how you throw it on the seats. So you basically just pull that little lever and then it'll throw them down. Now you have to pick up the seats manually yourself, but it's cool that you can just kind of throw them down with that little button. Now, all you have to do is just press this button and that'll lower down the rear hatch for the Discovery Sport. And let's go over things on the back end. So you guys will notice that they've got the full LED lights here, which they just have like a really nice look to them. I like how it just kind of like comes around to that little shape, just again, really cool aesthetic appeal. And then you've got the Sport P290 badging. That kind of gives you a rough idea of how much horsepower this actually puts out. Receiver hitch down below at the bottom, obviously, because this can tow. And then more parking sensors along the rear, but there's everything in the back. Coming here to the side, we do have Kia Sentry for the rear. And then you guys will notice the door panel here in the back of the Discovery Sport. So you kind of have like soft earth touch here, but then nicer leather is down here that has the red contrasted stitching that obviously matches the exterior, which is a really nice touch. And then you do have the really nice black trim just right there in that little area. And then coming over here, you guys will notice these seats. Again, they continue with that theme of red stitching and they kind of have this cool like piping that goes across the seats and then actual piping right here by definition. In terms of leather, very soft to the touch. And let's actually pop in and you guys will notice that um, I have a uh, mask on because of health and this thing keeps floating around all the place. But if you guys are wondering about 5'11 and legroom is plentiful, and then you guys will notice over here, you actually can control the climate from the rear. You do get a bunch of little areas where you can charge devices here in the back. And then you guys can see the little cup holder armrest thing. And I forgot to mention headroom. In terms of headroom, yeah, it's got a lot. Coming around to the side here, we do have keyless entry. And notice that the mirror will power fold out when you do unlock the car. And you do get blind spot monitoring. Now. Looking at the door panel here in the front, again, you've got that red stitching, all of the red accenting with the black just down below. I'm not gonna touch it because it's that like piano black trim. Your memory seat controls right here, all the window controls here at the top. And then here are what the seats look like for the front. Again, they look pretty much identical to the ones in the rear. Bolsters makes you feel a little bit tighter here in the front, but down here, definitely really soft, kind of like a pillowy feel. And then you've got the adjustments for the seats. Here's what the pedals look like in the Discovery Sport. And then that's the release 
for the rear hatch, your little parking brake, and there's the steering wheel. Well, the back so you guys can see the paddles. To start with the Discovery Sport, all you have to do is put your foot on the brake, push the push start, and then everything will pop on, and well, the uh, sunroof will fully pop open apparently too, so uh, that's pretty neat. Here's our steering wheel in the Discovery Sport. You guys will kind of recognize the controls on either side of this. This is in a lot of the newer Land Rovers. So you actually have kind of like a multi-section steering wheel, which is pretty interesting. So you have like smooth leather on the outside and the inside, but they have this ring that goes around the entire steering wheel that kind of cuts it in half. And then you've got the controls for the cruise control on that side, the controls for the little center stack on the other side, and then your phone controls as well. And then you do have the little like discovery badge here. And then I like how they actually do stitching and leather there in the center. Definitely makes it look a little bit more upscale. Paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel. And then you got the little stock for the turn signal. And then on the other side, you got a little stock for the uh, windshield wipers. Here in the center, you've got the little center screen and Notice that you've got the speed over on the left side and then on the right side, you've got the RPMs. And then you do have that little menu you can go through. So this just gives you different bits of information on the vehicle itself. I think it's pretty interesting. You can even look at the vehicle's VIN number from the screen. So there's two different sources on the car and then also in the infotainment system. So it'd be really hard to steal one of these because you'd have to be able to like hack into the computer and then change the VIN from there. So uh, that's all. Here is the infotainment system. And the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is the reverse camera. So with the reverse camera, Resolution on it is super solid and the lines will turn with the steering wheel itself And then notice that little screen is for the parking sensors because you do get sensors in the front and in the rear as well Now with the rest of the infotainment system response time on it is really good You have a bunch of shortcut buttons all throughout so it's really easy to get into different screens You can see for example here I can control the cooled seats and heated seats from the front and the thing that's cool about this screen system is if there was heated seats in the back you literally just have to click on the back row and then it'll go to them but this doesn't have that but still cool little function with this infotainment system in general but yeah i like the response time on it and it's cool that you can like pull up all these different menus and just like all the information you can find on the vehicle like just look at all these little things that you can find it's just it's crazy so this is where you actually can control all of the climate controls and notice that right now you can control the temperature you click it in you can control the seats and then you click this button in and then you can control the fan speed so it's pretty cool that they kind of like integrate the controls all into one little area really easy to use and it obviously frees up a bunch of space in general and then notice that you can press this here and this will now control the drive modes on the other side so if i want to go into eco mode i can go over there and then you've got the auto mode and then notice that it'll actually pop up here in this little center screen as you scroll through it so you've got the grass gravel and snow and then next to that you got the mud ruts and then finally you do have the sand mode but yeah really easy to control and i just think that it's cool that like you just press a little button and it illuminates and it's it's just it's neat here at the very bottom you guys will notice that you have a bunch of little controls like your auto stop start stability control hill descent control and then kind of like your off-road cruise control here's a shifter for that nine speed automatic remember that you can shift the gears yourself manually with the shifter or you can use the paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel whichever you do prefer and then coming back from that we've got the center console which again continues that theme of the red stitching and then inside the center console i mean storage space is really good got a couple little areas where you can charge devices and to finish things up with storage space coming over here we've got the glove box which is lined with felt you can see storage space in there is really solid as well and then i just love again the leather up here with the stitching and then you got the piano black trim as well just a really nice look up top here you've got the little sunglass holder you guys already saw but you do get a full panoramic center if i've got it closed because it's pretty hot today and uh, i don't want to get sunburned on my head Last cool feature is the mirror also doubles as a camera. Now you can turn it off. You just have to flip it down and then it'll be a regular mirror. But I mean, that camera is completely unobstructed by obviously the rear seats and the windows and the pillars and all that stuff. So it does make rear visibility a whole lot better. Here is the window sticker in the Discovery Sport. I'm just going to go through each individual section so you guys can freeze the frame if you would like on any particular section. And then here is the optional equipment. The one thing I thought was interesting is the moonroof is actually not too expensive it's pretty much average price for most moon roofs and then the other thing that i thought was interesting is the black contrast roof is 400 bucks if you guys remember i had a video on a jeep grand cherokee where to do that same exact option they were charging two grand for that same exact option so just crazy but this is the uh, total msrp sorry sixty one thousand seven hundred fourteen dollars let's take this discovery sport out and see how it drives
Let's quickly talk about visibility here in the Discovery Sport before we set off. So visibility over the hood is actually pretty good. It's cool to see that little black accent. It kind of breaks up things just visually on the hood, even from the driver's perspective. There's your visibility through both of the mirrors. And then here's visibility all throughout the rear of the Discovery Sport. So visibility in general is just really solid. And that all being said, let's set off. I am initially setting off here in the 2020 Discovery Sport. And before you guys complain about me having to wear a mask or anything like that, I think that you should all like appreciate the look I got going on here. I could totally see it, Dr. Hardy. But anyways, first impression wise, and holy crap, this thing will not stay in place. Maybe I put it upside down. I don't know. I don't know how to wear these things. But initially, just like setting off, it feels super similar to the regular Discovery. Like I'm not really noticing a whole lot of differences between this and a regular Discovery so far. It pretty much all seems pretty similar, which I mean, I kind of expected that, but this is also a lot less money than like a fully loaded Discovery. And this is, it's like $20,000 less than a fully loaded Discovery. And this is a fully loaded Discovery Sport. So kind of interesting to think about. Well, now we actually get to get up and go and yep, you can feel it. That's turbocharged. <laughs> Definitely has a little bit of turbo lag and then it kind of gets up and goes after that. Now, the next thing to talk about obviously is gonna be the road noise and the ride quality. Now, in terms of the ride quality, we've got these beautifully placed train tracks to go over. Yeah, it doesn't really do a whole lot. So it definitely is smooth from a ride quality perspective. And I love this camera. It's like just crystal clear, like shows exactly where the person is behind me. Just like, oh, that's so cool. Um, in terms of the noise that comes through, I don't know if you guys like noticed earlier in the video, but there's like a bunch of uh, tree removal happening right now. It always happens in the springtime where they cut branches off of trees and all that kind of stuff. Super loud and you don't really hear it. Like it's just, the cabin is so well insulated. So they did a really good job on that side of things. So I'm really impressed with it so far from just, I guess what it would do as a luxury vehicle. And the next thing is we're gonna kind of see how the responsive the transmission is. And this is obviously gonna be before we get our acceleration off on the highway. So doing a couple downshifts here. Yeah, I mean, they pretty much happen instantly. As soon as I click off with the transmission, it just downshifts, which is really impressive. And we'll see when I upshift. Oh, geez, <laughs> has more power than I thought it did. It, I, you guys are the power figures, but it kind of, it, it gets up and goes and it goes through the gears pretty quick. Like these ratios are all pretty quick. Like they're really close together, which definitely is interesting. That is gonna help you with uh, fuel economy. But if you do manually shift it, you are gonna have to be shifting pretty often just with how close these ratios are. And yeah, that's the uh, whole gear shift. We're gonna be getting up onto the interstate in just a moment here. And uh, don't hate me, I gotta breathe. <laughs> I, geez, I, I have so much respect for people that wear these masks like for like all day because, oh my gosh, it gets so stuffy. But yeah, I notice that when you're on like light acceleration, the gear shifts don't happen as quickly. And oh my gosh, it's falling off my nose. Um, they just don't happen as quickly, but when you're under like harder throttle, it does happen quicker. Heads up display is pretty cool because it shows me what gear I'm in and then it also shows me the current speed that I'm going. And going around this little kind of like a uh, corner section here, let's kind of see how the uh, body roll is with the Discovery Sport. Yeah, it's actually really good. It feels about average for an SUV in terms of body roll and the steering feel in terms of the vagueness, I would, I would also put the steering at about average um, for a vehicle like this. So you're on average with both, but we're gonna get our full blown acceleration here. Definitely, I mean, it feels good. So you guys heard the power figures. You heard the zero to six time of about six and a half seconds. And okay, there we go. Hopefully that works. It feels like it's right about at that point. It's, it feels like it, I mean, it, it just, it feels like a six and a half second car. And I'm impressed that they were able to make an SUV like this that quick with those power figures. So um, all I have to say is uh, good job Land Rover. And yeah, it's, it's good from an acceleration standpoint. It's good on the highway, it's quiet on the highway. And I guess you guys just get a look at my nose popping up because it just wants to pop out. So yeah, I, I'm impressed with it. It's, it's doing a really solid job. Let's uh, get into summing things up with the Discovery Sport. And I think I need to figure out a new way to talk because every time I talk it like slowly 
brings the mask down. So I still need to like figure out that scale. I'm sorry guys. But with my final impressions, I'm mostly gonna compare this to the regular Discovery. And most of the stuff that I'm finding is this is super similar. Now, no, it doesn't have as much power as the Discovery. You can get the Discovery obviously with the V6, which does have more power. So if you want more power, the Discovery is gonna be a better route to go. And oh, people jaywalking, crazy. And he's in all pink. <laughs> <laughs> what an interesting person. This is downtown Salt Lake for you people. Um, but continuing along with that, this is, again, a little bit less power than a regular Discovery, but I feel like the interior, I mean, it's pretty much just as nice. Now, there are some areas that like, they aren't as nice, like the whole dash area here isn't as nice as what a um, full-blown Discovery is. And so I can definitely see where you do lose a little bit there, lose a little bit on the performance. On the looks department, I like this. I think this looks a little bit better compared to a regular Discovery. I like the little black thing in the middle of the hood. I think it's just a really nice aesthetic appeal. And so just as like a, a whole like complete package and the fact that this is literally like $20,000 less than a, you know, full blown discovery. I think that this is, oh, I think that this is the better route to go. Almost turned on the wrong road. I think this is the better route to go. And so, yeah, if you are in the market for discovery, I would check out the discovery, but then also consider the discovery sport because you can save yourself a ton of money and still get a really cool SUV. And there we have it everyone, the 2020 Range Rover Discovery Sport. And again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Range Rover slash Jaguar dealership here in downtown Salt Lake for providing us with this Discovery Sport. Check out the inventory in the link below. I will see all of you in the next video.